I'm going to share with you some of our favorite games that we love to play that are educational and some that are not. Stick around. Welcome to the channel. My name is Morgan here at The Life of Tillman's. If this is your first time, I am so happy to have you here in this space, guys. I hope that while you're here, you find everything that you need, love, and enjoy right here on the channel. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you do not miss any of the videos uploaded on the channel. If you've been with me before, welcome back. I first want to start out by saying a thank you to Abby over at Rooted in Rest and Jessica at the Waldock Way for doing these monthly show and tell series. These are open collaborations. Anyone can join in on these collabs. They have amazing topics throughout the homeschool year for you to gather more information. Well, today's topic is all about games that we love in our home. So when you're done watching this video, make sure that you go down to the description and click on the playlist and check out all of the other amazing mamas participating in this collaboration and games that they love to use in their home. I'm excited about this because we do love games and we have some new ones that the girls got over Christmas that have quickly turned into fan favorites. We do play games at least a couple of times a week. Um, we try to make game night Friday nights, all of the things, but I allowed my girls to just tell me what games they love. With my four-year-old, I just simply watch her and I know the games that she is all about. I'm going to start with card games. The first card game that we love is this Harry Potter Uno. And you're probably thinking Uno is Uno is Uno. If you are a Harry Potter fan, I'm not. <laughs> my daughter, my oldest daughter is. I don't dislike Harry Potter. I just don't know that much about it other than what she's told me. But she received this card game for Christmas uh, last year. And it is pretty awesome. Yes, it is typically like an Uno game, like your typical Uno game. There is one little twist that is added into it. And that is this hat. What is the name of this hat again? It's a sorting hat. A sorting hat. <laughs> she loves this. Well, this card is like a wild card. You can change the colors with the card. But also, when you get this card, you get to pick a person who's playing the game with you. And they have to pull a card until they get the, is it Gryffindor? Yeah, the Gryffindor. One of the Gryffindor um, characters? People, people. Yeah, yes. Characters. So they have to pull until they get one of the Gryffindor people. I'm going to show you what that is. Which and is I have not played. Oh, so the cards are numbered. Card. Any color, one through four. She's helping me out with this. But we're getting there. So let's see if I could find one, which I'm not able to. Oh, here we go. Number two. So they would have to pull until they got a card, either one through four. And here's number two. A nice little twist to the Uno game. Super colorful with all of what I say colorful lots of different colors they're a little bit darker than regular uh, uno but a really cool game and we just love uno we are an uno crazy family so to find a different twist put on uno was right up our alley the let me put this one up second card game that the girls got for Christmas and we started my middle daughter started playing this game when my oldest daughter was at volleyball practice and games with some friends of hers that would be around. And I just dropped everything everywhere. <laughs> but she started playing this game and they absolutely love it. The game is Sleeping Queens. I'm gonna give you the short version of this game because the instructions, I will say, are a little lengthy. But do not let that deter you because the game is super, super fun. Made by a six-year-old. Made by a six-year-old, that is correct. So once you actually get the hang of the game, it's really fun. But you have all of these different queens and the goal is to be the first one to capture as many queens as you possibly can. What I do also like about this game is that you throw in math. When you are playing your cards for the game, you can throw in math problems. You can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, whatever you can get out of the card numbers that you have, which allows you to put more cards down so that you can get more cards and hopefully get more queens. Now you use certain parts of the game like the knights and the swords and what else is there in here? There knights, dragons, oh, dragons, sleeping potions. Sleeping potions. Here's, wands, a, which, here's a sleeping potion. Um, then there's wands that 
wake up the sleeping potion that takes it. Do y'all hear that? All of that. Um, I kings that help with the queen get the queens so many different things and then you have these number cards here and so you can do a number problem if you have a five a three and a two then you could say three plus two equals five or five minus three equals two it really helps to bring in the math portion of it and my girls love it we sit and play this forever the another thing that's really good about it is my baby girl my youngest daughter can play it as well now she does not know how to do the math portion of it but she knows what cards to play she knows her numbers she puts them down she knows what every card does and she's four she'll be five soon so it's a game that the whole family can enjoy which is usually my goal when we are getting games that all of us can enjoy the game we can sit down and add it to our game night friday nights the next game is another favorite this is spot it the girls also received this for Christmas and I specifically bought this for my youngest daughter to help with just matching fun for her. She doesn't really feel like she's having to do anything specific. Another thing that I love about Spot It is that there are actually, it's actually five games in one. You can play the games five different ways at varying levels, but what you will do is have cards like this. And between however many cards you lay down, depending on which form of the game you want to play of the five options, then you can, you basically are matching. So if we're looking here, we see that there's cheese here and cheese there. The first person to spot it grabs the cards and they add those to their stack. Some of the other ways that you play the games is that you end up giving your cards away to people when you spot it. So they end up um, on the bad side of that because they have too many cards. So the first person to get rid of all of their cards will be the one to win the game. I love it just because it's a matching game. In any game that I find, honestly, that my four-year-old can play and everyone else can participate is very helpful for her. And on top of that, it's super fun. Um, I got this off of Amazon. I think maybe like five or 10 bucks or something. I will try to link everything, all of the games down below in case you are interested in grabbing them. Another game, and this is, <laughs> it was specifically for my um, four-year-old, but it is The Floor is Lava. Everyone knows about The Floor is Lava. We do this sometimes with her Letter of the Week curriculum where she hops around on different numbers um, out in our area and has a really good time. So Floor is Lava, the ultimate goal of the game is to be the last one standing. That's it. Um, if you fall on what is called a question pad here, then you will get a question and you will have to do some form of a task. For example, one task is touch your toes. And another one is move to the closest unoccupied gray tile. One thing that I love about this game is that Oh, this one says throw an imaginary ball. And obviously if you're trying to throw a ball, then there's a possibility that you could fall off of your pad here and you would be out of the game. One thing that I love about this is that my daughter gets to work on her colors. She gets to listen and follow instructions. All of my daughters do, but specifically our youngest daughter, she gets to work on following instructions, um, thinking fast. That's that, that quick thinking that she needs as she's growing up. And this game provides it. She loves Floors Lava, picks it out, and we have plenty of living room space, minimal furniture, <laughs> that the girls just get to spread out and play the game. I have played with them a couple of times. It does get a little dangerous. At least it did for me anyway. <laughs> but we have a blast playing Floors Lava. We do it with pillows all the time. Yes, they have pillows around the floor sometimes to play the Floors Lava. But another game, geared towards my four-year-old that we all play though, just to, to have fun with her is Zingo Bingo. Zingo Bingo is another form of matching game and it's the first person to be able to find the little pegs. I will show you what those look like. You have this little contraption here and within it, you have little cards here and they have specific things on it. Like this one has Oscar on there there are planes and the number can you see that oh i can't uncover it the number two <laughs> um sun and moon there's grover here trash and you cans. trash cans um elmo lots of different options here but you slide them in here and you want to make sure that it's even on both sides and you put your cover over the top of it 
And what happens is you will slide, it will drop the two, here they are, and the first person to be able to match what is here to their bingo card. So blue is the easy side, red is the more difficult side. The first person to match it, you get to pick up your little peg and you place it on your bingo card. Another really quick, fun recognition game. She's learning the names of the different things. That's, that's, she doesn't know Elmo and Cookie Monster and all of those things. So for her to be able to see those, it helps broaden her vocabulary. She gets to spot out numbers and moons and shapes, all of those different things. It's a really fun game, simple. It goes by really quickly. You simply play until someone has completed, completely filled out their bingo card. And the last game, which is a favorite of mine, because I don't like to lose and I get to beat my girls. <laughs> but it is fun. I've shown you guys this one before, but it is the allowance game. This is a really old game. It was given to us and I believe that you can still buy it on Amazon, but it is a money game. Similar, I'll say, I guess to maybe not similar to Monopoly, but you go around the board and on the board you have different things that you can land on. Maybe you have to stop at the bank and you have to do a deposit for $2 or you sell some lemonade and you get $1.50 or you buy a lemonade stand and it costs you $5. Um, you go shopping or whatever it may be. So you are constantly having to uh, spend money and earn money back and forth. The girls love this game the first person to is it twenty dollars um yeah i think the first person to twenty dollars wins the game, so the game can go on it yeah. could go on for a while but monopoly goes on for a while <laughs> i mean it's like the longest game in history but we enjoy it it's really fun and we are counting money so they're learning all things money this has been the best game period when it comes to money that we have come across that the girls absolutely love love that game um, i will link it down below if i can find it if you can get your hands on it but i think that any money game is really good it's educational and it's fun and the girls learn about when the first couple of times that we played it they're they're learning about like the bank what do you do you make a deposit we're defining words throughout the process it's a really fun game lots of different extension activities and educational opportunities come about with just playing the game so those are our top games within our homeschool some educational some not but remember you can turn any game into an educational opportunity and i do mean any game. Don't forget to check out the playlist down below of all of the amazing moms participating in this show and tell collab about our favorite games within our home. And thank you again, Abby and Jessica. I appreciate it. Their channels are also linked down below. Go check out those ladies. They are a wealth of information. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, guys. Click that notification bell and I will see you right back here at the Life of Tillman's for another video next time. Bye.